Good afternoon, everybody, Uneducated Economist. Back in the Toyota, I got the window fixed. So for those of you who have been following my channel, you knew that a couple of days ago I was driving down the road and this guy, he was mowing the lawn next to uh, his driveway and his lawnmower picked up a little rock and bam, right through my window just as I was driving by. It was terrible luck. I whipped around to go talk to him about it and he has a lawn care business. He says, hey man, I'm insured. Call my insurance company. We'll get it all taken care of. And yep, sure enough, no problems, got the window replaced, and I'm back in business again. I paid $500 for this car. You know, and I talk to a lot of people who pay $500 a month in car payments. This thing gets excellent gas mileage. It runs like a top. I'm really glad to have it. And I'm really glad to be back in it and driving again. So I thought I'd give you guys a quick lumber update. A lot of you guys were asking me about lumber and what's going on in the industry. And really interesting times that are taking place. Um, house sales are dropping. Mortgage applications are dropping like crazy. Even though we're seeing the mortgage rates are coming down as well, the mortgage rates are due from the fact that the Federal Reserve is buying up mortgage-backed securities pretty much at any price. They are just loading up on these things to try and keep the housing market moving. But what it's going to do is it's going to give investors the ability to offload those mortgage-backed securities since the Federal Reserve is pretty much saying that we're going to be buying everything and anything under the sun. And mortgage-backed securities happens to be one of those things. So if you're not familiar with mortgage-backed securities, um, real simply, when you sign the bottom line on a loan, the bank doesn't really want that loan. They don't really care about that. What they care about is jumbling that up with a bunch of other loans and selling it off as a security. And that's the mortgage-backed security, and that's what the Federal Reserve is buying. So every time that somebody goes and refinances their home, they are paying off the old loan and then reestablishing a new one. And if the mortgage-backed security that comes up, the new one, is not purchased by investors, the Federal Reserve is going to buy those things. And that's what we're seeing take place right now, is that the Federal Reserve has pretty much said that they are going to be buying everything, and those are one of them. So mortgage applications for new homes, that's dropping. People are not interested in spending money on a new house right now or just buying a, new, buying a house in general because they don't know if they're going to have a job next week. And with over 3 million people filing for unemployment, that is a huge number, and that means that a lot of people are going to be out of work. So home sales are going to go into the toilet for a while. And you can really see it taking place in the... Uh, in the ETFs, if, a good way to track it is ETFs that track uh, REITs, the Real, Inva Real Estate Investment Trusts. And there's quite a few of them. You just punch into Google REIT ETFs and you'll get a list of them that you can, that you can track. And you'll notice that all of them are like down by quite a bit. Um, one of them I was following, REET, it was down like, geez, I want to say it was over 50% down. Another thing to track is, uh, is the home builders. Type in home builders and you can see like uh, DR Horton. Um, I think the ticker symbol on that one is DHI. That one has dropped dramatically as well. So home building, home sales, real estate in general, just the, the investment in it, all of it is tanking like crazy, including the mortgage applications. All those things are signs that we are not doing well as far as investment inside of the real estate market. And it's only going to take a little bit of time when these houses start to foreclose on that you're going to start seeing the housing in general come into a very bad situation as far as the price of them. So lumber, what I heard, and I haven't seen it in all areas and I haven't heard this as a common theme across the, the country, but I can imagine that if it's happening in small areas around me, that it's probably going to only take a matter of time before it becomes news across the entire country. But they have, in some areas, quit issuing. There's like a moratorium on new building permits. Now, this is a really bad sign when it comes to the construction market. If there is no new building permits being issued, then there's not going to be a new housing, no house supply increase, and we're going to be sitting in a situation where housing may even though we start seeing foreclosures without the new increase in housing, may start seeing housing stay elevated and not come down in the way that we would typically see if there was a housing crash. Now, I don't necessarily believe that, okay? I'm just saying that could be a possibility, especially if these new building permits do not get issued. 
what that's going to do to the lumber market is it's going to cause it to tank. Already we see lumber at, at a low. It's at like 300 per thousand right now. And just a few years ago it was at 650 per thousand. So there's been over a 50% drop at the lumber future prices. If the new building permits do not get issued, then we're going to start seeing a buildup of lumber inventory. And if we see a buildup of lumber inventory, you're going to see the prices drop even more. So that's kind of the things that you got to keep your eye on. Keep your eye on those uh, REITs, the Real Estate Investment Trust. Keep your eye on the home builders. Keep your eye on the mortgage applications. Keep your eye on the foreclosures once those start kicking in. Now, right now, they have, with the stimulus package and everything else that's going on, they're telling the, the homeowners that there's a forbearance, right, on their on their payments. So if you can't make your payments due to the, you know, shutdown of your business or whatever or your, or your company or your employer or employment, you can uh, forgive paying your payments for a while. It doesn't mean that they're going to forgive it in, altogether. It just means that they're going to postpone those payments until a later date. Once that runs out, if things have not improved by that time, then we are going to see ourselves in a very dangerous situation when it comes to housing because you're going to see the prices start to drop as the foreclosures really kick in. The other thing you got to think about is that a lot of people are renting homes right now. People like investors have purchased a lot of homes in order to rent them out because rentals are incredibly high as far as the price of them goes. So it's a really good investment up until this point. As people are getting laid off and losing their jobs and having to go on unemployment, and when you have this forbearance thing kicking in, and a lot of places are saying that you cannot evict people for not paying their rent, then a lot of people are just going to quit start, quit paying their rent altogether. And if they quit paying their rent, then the investor doesn't want that house. And if they can't do anything about it, then they're really not going to want to have the house. So we're sitting in a situation here that is going to be very questionable when it comes to the future. And you got to keep your eye on things like that. So anyway, I'll just give you guys that little bit. Let's have a good discussion on that. Uneducated economist. You guys let me know.